Hello learners, welcome to the Networks Performance Metric session. In this session, we will talk about the various network performance metrics available for any networking called as wired or wireless networks. So generally speaking, wired or wireless networks, they have a different metrics. They are slightly, wireless is slightly lesser than wired networks and wired is superior than wireless networks. In this topic, we will cover throughput, end-to-end -end delay, response time or latency, packet loss, packet drop, packet delivery ratio and data. So these are the different performance metrics we can measure for a wired or a wireless networks. Now let's start with the first topic called as throughput. What is a throughput? The throughput is the quantity of the data that is being sent in a given unit of time. It means the amount of data that is being sent between any two devices or any two computers or any two network elements in a given unit of time. Usually, throughput is measured in terms of bits per second, BPS. Here, the lowercase letter B refers to the bits and the uppercase letter B refers to the bytes. So usually, we call the unit of throughput in bits per second or kbps, kilobits per second. So, capital uppercase B indicates it is bytes, the small b indicates it is B. Throughput is an effective transmission rate between any two computers or any two nodes in a given unit of time. There is one more term called as good put, which is slightly related to throughput. What is a good put? In what way it is different from throughput? Let's see. Good put is the number of useful information delivered by the network to a certain destination per unit of time. Throughput can be anything that can be sent from one node to another node, whereas good put it's only useful information that can be sent in a given unit of time. Throughput where the data flowing through the source to destination whether it is useful or not. Good put is the application layer throughput. Generally we talk about application layer throughput is called as a good put. On the other hand, throughput can be measured at all the layers, be it a network layer or a transport layer or an application layer. Whereas good put can be measured only in the application layer. Now let's understand what is meant by instantaneous throughput or average throughput. So with the help of a simple example, consider there are two nodes as we see there are two nodes A and B which are connected through a wired link. So both are connected with a wired link. To check how much data this network can send at what interval, you need two parameters. The parameters are data rate or the bandwidth. We call it data rate or bandwidth. And a delay or the speed. For example, the data rate is 5 Mbps and the delay is 2 milliseconds. Then these values show that the network can transmit 5 Mbps of data in given 2 milliseconds. That's what from node A to B, we send the packet at 2 millisecond delay. With these values, we can calculate at what time and how much data have been sent from node A to node B or how many packets have been reached from the source to the destination. Let's say from A to B, A to B, we are sending the packet, source and the destination. This throughput is called as instantaneous throughput. Now let's suppose there is another node called as C. So we have A, we have B and we have C. Now which is connected, this node C is connected to B and doesn't have any connection with node number A. There will be another instantaneous throughput from B to C. So because B and C also have a link and there will be a connectivity between these two. Let's name the throughputs from A to B is T1. P to C is T2. To calculate the average throughput between A to C, we calculate throughput, instantaneous throughput T1, instantaneous throughput T2. Then divide them by the total number of throughput, which is 2 in this case because T1 and T2. So that's how we get the average throughput of the entire network. Throughput is a powerful performance metric for a wired or even a wireless network. Throughput gets affected mainly due to the delay in the network. If the delay is high, the throughput also will be affected. 
then network congestion, huge amount of packets going into the network and non-availability of congestion control in the network. If there is no congestion control, then automatically the throughput gets affected. So throughput is the ultimate and the basic metric to measure the performance of any network. Now let's talk about the second parameter called as end-to-end -end delay. Now let's move on to the next performance metrics. Generally we call it as end-to-end -end delay. As we have seen A, B, C. Between A to C, we have to find out the delay. That's called as end-to-end -end delay. So delay is the sum of delays of an end-to-end -end path on all links and the intermediate nodes. So link number one, link number two. So between that, we find a delay that's called as the end-to-end -end delay. Delays are configured in two types. One is transmission delay, another thing is in propagation delay. So we are having two things, transmission delay and propagation delay. Transmission delay means a delay in transmitting a packet in a particular link. So transmitting a packet from A to B, that we call as a transmission delay. If B bits, if B bits are sent in R seconds, then B divided by R is the delay in the link. So B by R, number of packets per unit of time. Propagation delay happens due to various reasons such as the length of the wire. So, if it's a wire network, the length of the wire, the wire also depends on the propagation delay and the speed of the light in the medium. So, what is the speed of light in the particular medium that we are sending the packets? Consider an example where there are two nodes A and E as source and destination. A and E. So, we assume that A and E. Where A is the source and E is the destination respectively. There are three intermediate nodes. So, A B, C, D and D. Totally the three intermediate nodes. Nodes A and B, C and D and D and E are connected through a wire. So A, B, C, D and D are connected through a wired network. Between B and C, there is a wireless network. Please remember, some are wired and some are wireless. In this network, the data rate and the delay between nodes A and B are 10 Mbps and 2 seconds. So that means 10 Mbps and 2 milliseconds. In this A to B, we will take this way, A to B. And between C and D, so B, C is this C and D, it is 1 Mbps and 1 milliseconds. And between D and E, the last half is 100 Mbps and 1 millisecond. That is a very fast network. The fastest link among this is the network between D and E, that's the last one. As it is transmitting 100 Mbps in just 1 millisecond. Now consider node E as an ISP, the last node is an ISP, internet service provider. And node D is the gateway, so gateway to any organization. So the organization connects to the ISP directly, so have a huge bandwidth, 100 Mbps, which is getting internet from node E, then D is getting node from E. Consider C, the node C as a switch, which is receiving internet from the gateway at node D at the rate of 1 Mbps in 1 milliseconds. This is the slowest link possible in this network. After node C, it starts to the node B wirelessly because B B, C. From B to C, we have a wireless link. The wireless network involves so many other parameters to measure the delay. So wireless is simply wireless, so there are so many other problems also, you know, like battery of the node, so many things. So we have a main product called as RTS and CTS, request to send and clear to send packets. And hello messages, Wi-Fi issues, which we will cover in the later sessions. It is difficult to fix a constant factor, because we cannot predict the delay of the constant factor in the wireless network. But for the time being, assume there is some delay between node B and C because of a wireless network. Finally, from node B to A, we have a network since 10 Mbps in 2 milliseconds. So this is our node A, that's source node, which is a fairly better network. Now let's name these delays as D1, D2, D3, D4. So D1, A to B, D2, D3 and finally D4. We have totally 4 delays. The end-to-end -end delay in this from A to E will be uh, the sum of all the four values that is D1 plus D2 plus D3 plus D4 from the source to the destination. Please note, delay between two nodes will be will not be an end-to-end -end delay and it will be simply a delay. So all the delays you add up together, you get the end-to-end -end delay between source to the destination. That's all about the end-to-end -end delay. Now let's talk about the next part called as response time or latency. Let's discuss what is the response time or otherwise it is called as a latency in a network. Response time in terms of technology is the time a system takes or reacts to a given input. So the next parameters are latency or the response time. In networking both response time and latency are the same things. In a network 
latency measures the time it takes for their, some data to get to its destination. It is usually measured in terms of a round trip time, that is RTT, R, T, and T, which is, means the time taken for the information to get to its destination and back again. So, it is similar to a ping the pack IP address or a ping a website, let's say, for example, ping worldwideweb.google.com. So, you will be getting a time, the round trip time. So, if the good uh, value means that the smallest value, the better, uh, the lower internet uh, speed means it could be a higher value. So, the higher value means low internet and lower value means a better internet. So, that's how the way we can calculate the round trip time. Latency is usually measured in milliseconds. Usually, it's milliseconds. You can see it, uh, while pinning the packet, it will be shown in milliseconds. Latency is one of the factors which affects the throughput due to the high congestion in the link. So, let's understand latency with the help of a Example. There are two nodes, source and the destination. The source node sends the pink packet to the destination and the destination sends another packet to the source. So that's what we call as round trip time. So we'll take the time taken from the source to reach the destination is TP and from the destination to back to the source is called as TR. To calculate RTT, that is a round trip time, we simply add the value of TP, TR. So TP plus TR. This reflects the time taken from the reaching from the source to the destination and then back again is called as the response time. With this time factor, we can calculate the latency of a particular network. Now, this is one of the very important and the common performance metrics in networking. So, we have seen throughput, goodput, end to end delay, and latency. Now, we will go to the next topic for this packet loss and packet drop. So, Packet loss and packet drop. There is a slight difference between both these things. Packet loss occurs when one or more packets of data traveling across a computer network fail to reach the destination is called as a packet loss. And sometimes the packet loss some might occur when the source does not receive the packet from the destination. So either from here to here it doesn't reach or from there to here it doesn't reach. So that's what we call as a packet loss. Packet drop occurs on an interface. Whereas packet loss can happen anywhere in the path. So drop will be on the interface and packet loss will be anywhere in the link. Let's understand this with an example. Consider again there are two nodes, node A and node B. Both are connected to a wired network. Again here for example we have taken a wired network. So in future we will see the wireless networks. Both the nodes having a queue of 50 bytes. That means node A it maintains a queue of 50 byte size. Node B maintains a queue of 50 byte size. Node A sends the packet to node B. However, in between, there is a packet get dropped and does not reach the destination. This is called as a packet loss because it doesn't reach the destination. This situation is called as a loss. Packet loss may happen due to link congestion because of the link congestion wherein multiple nodes are accessing the same link. There could be a possibility of congestion, so there could be one reason. Or which is creating it in the root in the packet, so which, which usually create a congestion in the root in the packet. Another reason for a packet loss will be the radio interference. That means uh, we have a wired network, so there is a power line cable is going on. So there is a telephone power line cable or there is an electrical power line. Because of that could be some interference. Because of that also a packet might be getting lost. These are the two reasons. So the transmission beyond transmission range we call it as an interference range. So up to a particular level we call it transmission range. Beyond that there is an interference range. Now if node A sends a packet to node B, and the queue of the node B is full. Now I send a packet. Already the queue, the node is maintaining node B is maintaining a queue with the 50 bytes. Now the 51st byte is go there and it does not able to hold it there. So it simply drop. That's it. The node B says this is the packet, but could not hold it, so it will get dropped. So that's called as a packet drop. The destination node can also drop the packet if the source node is a malicious node. Malicious node, which is an unwanted node that doesn't want to be sent packets to other nodes. So that could be one reason that it could be malicious. So that's all about loss and uh, drop packet loss. Drop. Now next we will talk about uh, packet delivery ratio. Simply we call it as PDR. The packet delivery ratio is the ratio of the number of packets successfully received by the destination divided by the total number of packets sent. So received divided by the sent. If it is 100 percentage, I have a PDR of 100 percentage. So all packets sent are being received. That's simple. When the PDR increases, the performance of the node. Increases or network increases. When the PDR decreases, the performance of the network also decreases. So that's what a very simple logic on PDR. Our last uh, parameter we call as a jitter. 
Let's talk about the last parameter called as jitter. It is also one of the important parameters to check the network performance, especially in wireless systems or VoIP, VoIP, Voice over Internet Protocol. Usually we call about this to WhatsApp, Telegram, and these are the application. They use us VoIP, Voice over Internet Protocol, where they usually the multimedia packets have been sent to via those packets. So jitter happens when certain packets of information are dropped or sent out of order, which leads to a jumbled information in the network. So you may have experience when you make a call to your friends in WhatsApp. A WhatsApp call, you might have experienced some out of order packet, something. You will be seeing the out of order information when you talk or chat, uh, or when you send uh, audio messages or video messages. So usually this happens through VoIP. The typical value of the jitter should be less than 40 milliseconds. This is for less than 40 milliseconds, you have a better internet. If your internet speed with the jitter is more than 40 and between 40 to 50 milliseconds, then it's time to change your network. Let's understand what causes jitter. Jitter can occur due to network congestion, wireless network, and bad hardware. Because of this network congestion, wireless network, or a bad hardware. If you are using your Wi Fi router for the past seven or eight years, then it's time to change, else your jitter will be high. How can you remove the jitter? You can remove the jitter by implementing jitter buffer. You have a buffer, you put all the timing uh, data in the packet into the buffer, and as it you feel that it's fine. So, in that case, it's fine. Or else, change your internet connection. Talk to your ISP, explain this all this stuff. Else, you change your internet or simply change your hardware. These are the three things we can be able to improve your jitter. So, with this, we have come towards the end of our session. In today's session, we discussed various performance metrics called as throughput, goodput, and twin delay, then uh, latency or response time, packet loss, packet drop, packet delivery ratio, and finally jitter. I hope you would have got a fair understanding of the network performance methods. So, in future, we will see some more topics relevant to network performance on our wireless networks. Thank you. Happy learning.